everybody. If you are just joining us, um, we're going to get started here in about 30 seconds, minute or 30 seconds, just to give um, time to get a little bit of an audience. So just bear with us here. All right, looks like we got a little bit of an audience. So let's go ahead and get started. Today we have Galen Johnson of Hampton Virginia Cooperative Extension, who's going to be talking about fall vegetable gardening. Um, so if you didn't realize, you can also plant a fall garden the same way that you plant like maybe an early spring garden with um, your cabbages, you can also plant a fall garden. Um, so that's this week, a really important topic. Then next week, and for the next three weeks, we're going to have this little mini series on preservation. So all of the tomatoes or cucumbers that you're getting from your summer garden right now, um, different ways to preserve those for the winter. So next week is going to be hot water bath canning. So if you are curious about hot water bath canning, we have some um, experts from um, the Master Food Volunteer Program who are going to share all about home preservation. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Galen. And if anyone has comments or questions for Galen, we're going to do those at the end, but you can type them into the um, comment section on the video. Well, thank you, Devin. I appreciate you and the state office having me on today. I'm going to talk about fall uh, vegetable gardening, and I've been fall vegetable gardening since about the mid 2000s. And um, everything is a learning experience. I'm in a new rental and learning even more because uh, this is the first year I'm doing uh, vegetable gardening in containers. So it's a constant learning experience. Okay, so we'll just go over some advantages and some challenges that you may all have. Um, I understand that the audience might be, you know, beginners. Um, some of you may already be gardening uh, in the fall and maybe even the winter. I'm going to go over plant hardiness, um, some common crops uh, that you can grow in the fall, and we're going to talk about cross protection later on. So some of the advantages, I think fall gardening is just the best, um, especially being from up north, Midwest from Michigan. Um, I appreciate the lower temperatures. I don't do so well in this Virginia heat of ours. Um, so I appreciate the lower temperatures. It's going to be in the 50s, 60s, lower 70s. It's coming back. There are less pest pressures. That said, there, that, that doesn't mean there are no pest pressures. You're still going to have some pests, but how it is in the summer right now, it won't be nearly as many pests um, as you see as we get colder. And for me, spring crops are coming back. Spring crops, especially those in the... Um, brassica family are my favorite crops and so last year these pictures down at the bottom last year um, those were some lettuce seeds that I started in August like towards the um, late August and then there's one of my broccoli heads that I had uh, in December so carrying things all the way to December and I know you know we all think of Christmas time in December, but technically it's, you know, early December, mid-December still fall. So you can definitely grow um, down in December, at least down here in Hampton Roads. Some of the challenges that you may face, you know, exhaustion. I'm, I'm a four season gardener. So I garden, I garden uh, spring, summer, winter, and fall. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty tired, but I've been doing this for a long time, and so I'm used to it. I've, I've, I've built, built it up in my system to just keep going. On the flip end, your soil may be exhausted as well, and you may need to take a, a step back and add nutrients, whether it's a cover crop, um, maybe it's uh, side dressing, adding in poultry manure, organic uh, materials to that soil to bring it back, especially if you're growing a, a, a heavy 
crops such as you know watermelons or corn or something like that you need to replenish those nutrients um frost is coming okay um it's you know especially we're talking about a little bit of zone five that's in virginia zone six that is coming very soon just we're talking a couple months here um and so you may get some crop loss due to that you need to understand your microclimate in your yard, especially if you're a beginner and you don't really understand what a microclimate is. You need to become a, um, a meteorologist in your local backyard area. I know along the wall or of my house there, I have a cold spot. And so when the meteorologist on your local news channel says, oh, it's going to be 33 degrees today or it's going to be 34, I know in that particular spot, it's going to be five degrees colder. So it's going to be cooler there and I need to plant an appropriate crop that can take the frost that's going to be there. So understand your microclimates. Um, you're going to have slower growth uh, just due to the reduced temperature and sunlight as we get closer um, towards that uh, equinox, you know, just shorter times right now, the sun is still out around eight down here. And eventually that's going to go to about six o'clock, 6.30 when, that, when the sun sets. So you need to be prepared for that. Um, also, we have a, oops, sorry. You are balancing three seasons, okay? So if you plant now, you're still dealing with the summer heat, okay? So, I love spinach. Spinach is a fall crop. It's going to get mentioned um, in the graphic that Devin puts out um, for you to plant. However, it's going to bolt, which means it's going to go to seed down here if I plant it now. And I have to kind of delay that experience probably till September, maybe even October. I had some spinach bolt in the spring or um, in September down here. Also, you know, you're dealing with the fall. Um, you don't know exactly when that frost is coming. And so while we have, you know, graphics, you know, that'll give you an estimate of when the frost is coming, we truly do not know. Um, Cause you know, being from Michigan, uh, that is a zone six. It used to be a zone five. Um, I remember dealing with frost and freezing in October, um, you know, early October like the first of October, whereas now it's mid-October. So you never know when it's truly coming. And of course, winter, if you're gonna go with the winter, that's even more challenging um, to do, but um, it is possible. And so here we have the plant hardiness uh, zone map. If you're not familiar with it, it just kind of gives you an average low and an average high temperature uh, that a plant needs to be able to withstand. This really doesn't matter to the annuals. If, you know, the annuals, if they're not feeling it one way or another, they're just going to bolt or go to seed or die on you anyway. This is more so for your perennial vegetables. So say something like asparagus, um, asparagus, asparagus can be grown across the state. It's zone three to eight, um, whereas something like rhubarb, you know, can be grown in zone six or lower, and it can be a perennial. Um, I haven't seen anyone grow rhubarb uh, up here or down here in Hampton Roads. Something like artichoke would work better down here compared to trying to grow it up in the mountains. So those are going to work for some of your more perennial vegetables. So here is the um, frost map of Virginia. Uh, so we have actually four zones here in Virginia. We have a zone five. I want to say that's Highland County that has a zone five. So if you're from Highland County, um, I'll try to put that zone in with six because it's similar, but it's going to be a little colder. And then you have zone six, which is the mountain area, zone seven, which is the Piedmont area. And then where I'm at in the Tidewater area, we are in a zone eight. So essentially, you look at those average first frost killing dates, 
Um, Mount Airy is, is coming very soon. I believe I calculated it's like around 70 days, um, a little bit more um, that you have to get crops in. You know, if you seed them, that's after transplanting, once they germinate and, you know, produce the first leaves and are not ready to be on their own, you have a certain amount of days after that time for that plant to grow, reach maturity, and be ready to harvest um, before that frost comes. And so the whole object for you is to plant and reach some sort of growth to where when that frost comes, the plant is going to be able to take it. Okay. Um, so something like kale. Okay. If you plant, you know, or if you try to seed kale near your frost date, it's going to have trouble germinating or if it germinates at all. But let's say you have a nice, healthy, mature, quote unquote, adult plant. Um, it's going to take the frost just fine. Okay. Whereas something like you know, I put in a, a second summer crop of tomatoes last week, and that's going to get me through fall down here in Hampton Roads. That first frost that comes, it's going to kill it, and it's not going to come back. So that's when I, I'm, my garden is going to be a blend of summer and fall crops, whereas in the mountain areas, um, you should think about switching to fall crops pretty soon. So plant hardiness, there are actually four types, but I put in um, tender and very tender. I put that into one category. Then you have semi-hardy and hardy. So the, the picture to the right um, is a picture of my cucumbers from last year. They were growing and that's actually uh, an October photo. And they're doing well in the picture. We had a very weird fall and winter is it abnormally warm. Not saying that's going to happen this year, but it could um, on top of everything that's happening this year. But these are my cucumbers in early fall. Um, they're flowering, they're growing. But if you're in Hampton Roads and if you're going to put out a second cropping of um, warm season plants, you are probably going to look at hand pollinating your plants because the um, the bees, you know, there's a bunch of bumblebees out on my cucumbers right now, but they will not be there later in the fall. So in order to get your cucumbers or any kind of plant that, you know, needs a pollinator, you're going to have to um, hand pollinate. And I just use that with a brush. I find the male flower, brush the male flower and Put that on the female flower that has the actual cucumber or zucchini or whatever fruit is on there. So you got to think about that. Those tender crops, they need summer weather. Um, they're going to have optimal growth. The frost is going to either damage or kill it outright. Um, you know, once you start getting below 55 degrees, the plant growth that you have is what you get. Okay, and it's usually at nighttime temperatures. That's where it's going to stay. Um, so the tomatoes I have in the ground right now, I expect them to start dying off here, you know, um, early November, late October, something like that. So these are your tender crops. Um, for those of you who are in Hampton Road, something like tomatoes, cucumbers, you know, I wouldn't recommend like cantaloupe or corn or anything that takes like 80, 100 days, 120 days, something like that. Um, now's not the time to grow, you know, a second batch of that. Something like tomatoes, peppers, and this is as a transplant, not from seed. Um, something that you can get into the ground um, now, uh, yesterday, uh, you, you can get away with it. Semi-hardy crops need spring, fall weather for growth. They're going to grow at 40 degrees and above, but it's going to be slower. Okay, whereas in the spring where you're, you know, gradually getting warmer and the plant's going to grow more quickly, it's going to be the reverse now. Things are going to get cooler and the plant is just going to grow more slowly. So you want to take advantage of the summer weather now to bring it up to uh, a good size so that, you know, whatever frost is going to come, 
um, it can take the impact. These plants are going to tolerate a, a light frost. So your meteorologist forecasts 32 degrees, 28 degrees. Um, they're going to take, they're going to be okay. Okay, what they won't do is take repeated frosts. So something like my lettuce, these are my lettuce. Um, actually, I planted those in the fall and uh, these lettuce are actually growing in December, um, early December, so still technically fall. Um, it's not gonna take repeated frosts. Um, it's gonna die eventually. Um, I believe these lettuce took two frosts and then they were done and I had to reseed in the house and then transplant again um, in February. Um, so you, something like lettuce that's nice and quick and easy, um, you can get into the ground. Something like cauliflower is something you should have a transplant right now ready to go uh, and, and plant into the ground, especially if you are in zone six and five. And then probably a week after, you know, let's say zone six and five, you, you're planting this weekend, and then afterwards, zone six, the weekend after, I mean, seven, the weekend after, and then zone eight, the week after that. You, you should be in sometime in August. Zone eight, uh, we can get away with September with some of these, these bigger crops. I plan on going in with, you know, my lettuce is in now, my broccoli um, is in now, and I plan on doing something like spinach late September because it's just so hot down here. So your hardy crops, um, they're going to take those, those deeper frosts, 20, 25 to 28 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the broccoli that I had um, deep in the winter because um, I don't believe we had a frost. Um, it, the weather was just weird last year. I don't believe we had a frost last fall. But this is the dead of winter uh, sometime in January. The leaves look like that because... That ground is, well, not the ground, the mulch is frozen and probably the first quarter inch of the soil is frozen. But the plants was fine. The roots, if you dig down deeper, the, the soil was cold, yes, but it wasn't frozen, so we weren't killing the roots. Um, so if you're going to do this, a nice layer of mulch, because like I said, we had a weird winter last year that doesn't, or fall last year, that doesn't necessarily mean that'll be the case this year. So a good layer of mulch. Uh, will help protect the roots. But that plant, once the sun came up and started thawing everything out, the leaves came back up. Um, the broccoli head was just fine. It kept growing and I was able to harvest and eat. So some of your um, hardier crops, you know, arugula, something like Brussels sprouts, you know, that's a hundred day plant. That's something that should have been in, you know, a, a week ago. Um, you might be able to get away with it in Hampton Roads um, just, just because, you know, our frost date is in November. So if you have something to plant now and it takes, you know, uh, 100 days for you to start harvesting, you'll, you'll, you'll push it. Um, but all of these other crops, you know, cooking greens especially, um, they can take a frost. Th these are my uh, collard greens last fall. Um, I always shoot for Thanksgiving when I'm looking at my dates uh, for collard greens and some of these other greens um, so that I can have something at the dinner table. And these are my collard greens um, doing just fine. And actually, you know, something like collard greens, they taste even better when they, they have a frost um, on them. So, oh my God, the frost is here. What do you do? Um, in some cases, you know, the plants that can take a deep frost, I don't do anything at all. I just let them take the frost. Um, here are some um, collard greens that were grown once again in the dead of winter. Um, they bounced back. They were just fine, and they, they keep taking frost over and over again. Um, it's just fine. Whereas something like, you know, um, those semi-hardy crops, they might need a row cover to get them through. 
Um, these are actually covering some tomatoes when we were having issues and didn't know when to plant in, in uh, April and May of this year. But row cover is definitely a, a lifesaver. Some people use buckets. Um, I, I prefer the row cover because, you know, I can, I have like 500 feet of it so I can stretch it out however long I need it. Um, and this, this offers a temperature buffer. It's not big, maybe like two, three, four degrees. Um, but if you're talking about a, a frost coming and you need to protect your crops and keep the frost off of your plants, um, I highly suggest a row cover. On the, on the flip end, um, you know, um, just before this presentation, I saw a question, well, how do we protect from, you know, the warm season? or the, the heat is something like the shade cloth um, to reduce the amount of sun that's hitting your plants will work well. Um, we have a cold frame. You can do cold frames to keep your, your plants protected. Uh, this was actually taken out when I was working in West Virginia. One of the master gardeners out there offered to help build a cold frame for uh, myself so that I can grow uh, some lettuce and it was just made out of old wood that he had and he had replaced some of his windows and so he used that product and donated it to me um, and it's a way to just trap heat in there but if you're going to go with this option you got to be careful about the daytime you need to vent in there um, because it will get it, it can get very hot in there and then you can start toasting plants you would be amazed um, when those daytime temperatures are like 45, 50 degrees, how hot it can get in there, especially when the sun, um, this is facing south, when the sun hits it right in the traps heat. And then you have low tunnels. Uh, this was a community garden I was in charge of again in West Virginia. I just haven't had the need to build low tunnels down here in Hampton Roads. It is just so warm. But low tunnels are another option you can uh, put over your beds if you know it's just too cold. Uh, in those low tunnels, I had lettuce growing in on the, the far right bed, and then on the far left, I had some um, spinach. And you know, it keeps it off temporarily. Those lettuce plants, when you started getting into like the lower 20s, the upper teens, they frosted and they took one frost and they were done after that. So, you know, probably a combination of low tunnel and then frost cloth uh, will help you um, get through, you know, those cold nights. But I don't expect it to get particularly too cold in the fall. This is, again, in the dead of winter. But like I said, I haven't had the need to use low tunnels here in Hampton Roads, but you might need to look at it if you're up in zone five or zone six. Okay, and so um, there's there's no reason that you can't grow in the fall. And, you know, you, you can definitely do it, and I definitely enjoy growing it um, up there. My lettuce plants again in the in the uh, upper left picture, and then I harvested lettuce all throughout the fall, all throughout the winter. Um, you know, that was my harvest. Lettuce is probably the number one item that we purchase in this house at the grocery store. And I was able to reduce the amount of lettuce we did purchase, even through the summer. Um, we really didn't buy that much lettuce. It came out of the garden. Um, you know, carrots are another one. Actually, these were overwintered. I seeded them in the fall, put them under a low tunnel and overwintered them and they came out in March. Um, if, you, if you're trying to get a harvest earlier than that, you know, you want to seed them now so that you, be, you can get them in late fall or so. And then these are my garlic um, that I grew last fall. Um, they came up well. It's just that, um, you know, I really didn't get a whole lot of the garlic out of there. And that's, you know, just issues with the, the soil um, that I have in the container and where it was located. And so I kind of just ripped them up and um, I put some more lettuce in there and it, everything turned out fine. So you can definitely grow in the fall, um, which would be more challenging. 
Um, but yeah, you, you can get a great, a great harvest. And there's my spinach uh, going to seed. You can see how it's going to seed right over there. Um, you know, during the heat of the day, even though it's growing in the shade. So there's always a lesson to be learned. Um, if you're a beginner, um, give it a try. Um, and we'd be happy to help you out um, across the state at your extension office. And I will be happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Gillen. That was awesome. Um, we have a couple questions here. Um, we'll try to get through as many as possible. So one good question, um, what does plant mean? Does it mean seeds or transplant? So maybe if you could just talk about which plants you normally start from seed and which you should always go with transplants. So majority of my plants are gonna come out as seed. Uh, so something like, you know, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, um, you should get those in as transplants if you are up in, you know, five, six zones. And like myself, I'm going to start my broccoli seeds this weekend. I'm going to let them get some good growth on them for a couple of weeks after they germinate. And then I, they will be in the ground later in the August as a transplant. So it'll be a cascading effect um, depending on where you live. Um, the Tidewater area can get away with seeding right now. And as you go lower in zone, you want to start switching over to a transplant. Okay, and then along the same lines, we have a question um, about the best way to start seeds for transplanting. So somebody says that they have cabbage seeds and they're wondering how they should start if they're planning to transplant them. So I use a um, seed starting mix. It is very low. It has no nutrients essentially. Um, and then I just use like um, any kind of container that I can find. So I have like, cell tray cells um, like they would use at a nursery. I use that and I seed in there and um, I put it in light. We have light levels now, or at least if you have a very good south facing window, we have the light levels in order to let them germinate. Um, otherwise, you might be looking at supplemental lights in your house. And you also want to keep them moist, um, especially if you're trying to grow seeds outside because that soil is going to, or potting mix is going to dry out very quickly. And then I think you did mention this earlier, but a couple people had asked how to protect um, baby plants. So maybe if you're seeding when they first come up or if you transplant, how to protect those new plants from getting just totally fried in the sun. A shade cloth uh, growing in the shade uh, will work. Uh, delay planting, especially if you have something, you know, that's a quick producer like lettuce uh, or, you know, quick producer, but, you know, lettuce meaning you're not growing for a full size head, you're growing a baby leaf and just doing cuts of your lettuce. Um, radish, things like that. Um, you can delay planting those because radish only takes 30 days to get baby leaf lettuce 30 days something like that. Otherwise, you're looking at um, like a shade cloth of some sort just to keep them protected. Even if it's like a row cover and you just um, keep them hovered over the plant uh, just to keep the sun intensity out because um, we still have some 90 degree days uh, coming ahead. So that's why I'm going to delay uh, seeding some of my crops. I'm going to seed my lettuce because I have a heat tolerant variety um, that does just fine in the yard. We actually just got a question about that as well. Someone wants to know if you have a recommendation for a heat tolerant spinach variety. So maybe if you could just talk about what you look for when you're ordering seeds, um, you know, like kind of the different things that you might look for if you're concerned about heat tolerance. Yes, yeah, so when I'm shopping online for seeds or even when I'm at the big, big box store, I look, they specifically put out heat tolerant. Um, and if you do it online, you can even search by heat tolerance. Um, there, there aren't a whole lot of heat tolerant, you know, cool season plants out there. They're, they're um, starting to breed them, um, but there aren't a whole lot 
I even have a heat tolerant spinach that's still bolted in the heat. So um, take it with a grain of salt, but I do have a heat tolerant um, lettuce variety that got me through June Jul and July just fine. It's a little bitter now, um, you know, just being exposed to so much, so much sun. So it will get pulled out this weekend and reseeded. Okay, we also have um, a question about container gardening. So somebody says specifically they have rhubarb in a large pot in Powhatan. So should they be worried about that? But then maybe you could also just talk a little bit about um, if you do have container, if you are container gardening, any special considerations you might want to take into account if you're going to try and do a fall garden in containers. Okay, rhubarb concerned about um, what exactly? The heat? Just if it'll overwinter in Powhatan. Uh, I'm just in what zone is Powhatan in? If it's, I think it, well, I'm going to say seven. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, if if you're like in zone seven, you might be. I won't say 100 percent sure because it does say uh, zone is zone six and below on rhubarb. Um, is considered a perennial. But if it is in a container and, and you have, um, you know, doubts about it, you can bring it in. Um, you know, uh, if it's just too hot, if it's, if, if it's been producing for you this week, I'm not sure how long you've had it in there in the ground. Um, it might come back up, I'm not sure. But if you have concerns, you, you can, um, you can bring it in if you'd like. It shouldn't be a problem, however. Because, you know, the heat is what gets, if, if um, you haven't had any problems this year, you, you should be okay. Awesome. And then um, do you have any other oh. recommendations? I know you, sh you showed um, like the container with the um, row cover on it. Do you have any other um, like tips or suggestions for people wanting to do fall gardens in containers? Yes, yeah, so containers, I'm sorry, and I forgot you, you did say um, special considerations. So special considerations um, is the container is going to freeze more quickly than your in-ground garden. Um, you know, that potting soil just doesn't have that buffery capacity like in-ground soil does. Now, it does when you, when you put mulch on it. I have some figs that are mulched in containers and blueberries. And they were just fine um, dealing with the winter. Um, but something like my lettuce um, that didn't get mulched, you know, they froze up, those roots froze up. So a row cover will help. It keeps it a little warm. Um, you know, I've seen people use Christmas slices to generate just a little bit of heat. They put it right down there at, um, you know, soil level just to generate just a, just the tiniest little heat to keep things warm. Um, otherwise, you know, buckets, if you're able, if you have like the perfect circle of, you know, lettuce or something like that, um, low tunnels, um, thinking what else? Yeah, that's all I can, that's all I can think of that I've seen folks use, just some kind of protection to get them through those, those cold nights. But row cover has really been helpful. That's perfect. Um, now we just have a couple more questions here. Someone asks, is it still possible to get soil samples done now? I Do you know the answer to that? Yes, it you is. can. Yes, um, contact your local office and they have soil tests or they can direct you to where you can get soil tests. Okay. You, should, you should still be able to send them off to the lab and get results. Okay, so the answer to that is yeah. If you have, if you're having trouble, contact your local extension office. You can get a soil test, and then um, just in general, if you're having problems, someone at your local extension office can also help you kind of like troubleshoot and walk through um, mm -hmm. what what might be going on. And then last question here: Someone wants to know. Um, could a broccoli or cauliflower produce more than one bunch, or is it like a cabbage where you only get one for the plant? Good question. So, um, broccoli tends to produce, and cabbage, or cauliflower tends to produce a single head, 
And then when you chop that off, it produces side shoots that you should get um, throughout the year. Um, last year when I grew in containers, I was disappointed in the side shoot production of broccoli that I had. And that could have been my impatience because it was winter and I should have expected slower growth. But that is the concept. Um, and then you also have varieties of broccolini. Um, I'm not sure that there are, you know, cauliflower equivalents of broccolini um, where they just send up, you know, these long shoots with the broccoli head and you harvest those. They're, they're tiny and, you know, you harvest about six of them to make a side dish. Perfect. Um, if we didn't get to your question in here, which I think we got most of them, but if we didn't get to your question, um, I'll try and come back through as the Master Gardener page and answer any of those questions. If you run into anything or you um, have a specific question, you can always reach out to your local extension office. Um, and I will put the um, vegetable transplanting calendar publication in the description on this video that um, we have a publication that's got all these charts in it. And that's what I use to make the little um, infographics for each month. So um, if you go to that publication, you can like print out the whole chart for the entire year, which is what I do. And I have it up on my fridge so you can look, you know, like a couple months in advance. Um, so I'll put the link to that publication in the description on this video. And then um, next week is going to be the first in our home preservation series with some um, food and nutrition program, master food volunteer um, content. And so we're going to talk about water bath canning. So pickles or um, even tomatoes, I guess you can water bath. Um, they're going to talk about all of that stuff next week, next Thursday at two. So we'll hope to see you all then. Thanks. Take care.